Now we're going to look at some more Windows Forms functionality in Visual Studio and with C Sharp as our programming language. So let's create a new project, make sure we're under Visual C Sharp and we'll do a Windows Forms application. And I'll call this one More Windows Forms. I click OK. I'm presented with a default form that's created automatically for me. I just want to show a few things in the Solution Explorer before we start on this project. First is that the program.cs file, which we rarely, if ever, need to edit, um, has it the main method in it. That's where code execution will begin. And all that's really happening in here is that form is being displayed. Um, and that's all that's happening in program.cs. Let's rename that form from form1.cs and let's call this list box demo form that's in Pascal case there and I do not want to remove the .cs extension sometimes when you rename it selects everything here and you'll get rid of the .cs extension and then Visual Studio doesn't recognize that as a C sharp uh, programming language file anymore and won't compile correctly so keep the .cs when I hit enter, it asks me if I want to rename all references to Form 1, and I do. And watch what happens with this line of code right here when I click yes. There we go. That changed to my new form name, Listbox Demo Form. So that was nice. Let's exit out of program.cs. And before we go ed on editing this form, I want to show you the designer.cs file. The designer.cs file you will rarely need to go into unless you um, make a mistake and we'll make that mistake together so you can see what um, when we'll need to go in here and edit it. But down here this Windows Form Designer Generated Code is hidden behind this plus sign and this area of this file will get populated with more and more lines of code um, as we add controls and change properties of controls and assign events and methods to controls in our design view. This will auto populate. And so we don't need to go in here um, except when we make a mistake. So now let's go back to our our form uh, in design view and let's first change the name of the form. I don't like that this is um, or the text property of the form. I don't like that it says form 1 up here. Let's make something like a text box, or excuse me, list box demonstration. And when I hit enter, this form one is going to update to list box demonstration. That's nicer. And so uh, I want to show you that error that we could create um, that many people new to Windows Forms programming will run into. So say I add a button to my form. And by the way, your toolbox should be over here. If it's not, then it could be auto hidden. And so you want to click on the toolbox here and then pin that down so it stays here. If you don't see it there, go up to view toolbox to make sure the toolbox appears. I'm going to drag in a button. Uh, just keep the default name of button one. And say I wanted to associate a method with the click event of this button. I could do that by double clicking on the button. And I have this method here, button one underscore click. So if I go back to my design view, if I run this, <clears throat> here's my Windows Forms application. Nothing happens when I click button because I have not had written any lines of code in that method but it's there, it works, no errors. So say I accidentally or on purpose delete this method. I delete this method uh, because you know what, I'm not going to need that button anymore or I don't want to associate anything with the click pr uh, event of that button. And I go back to my design view and I'm going to see a real scary set of errors. I got the error list down here and I don't even see my form anymore, what happened? Well, what happened is that your designer.cs file is still pointing toward that method that we created in the code behind window. And so therefore we need to edit our designer.cs file and get rid of that association. So down here, the second error, 
It says the designer cannot process unknown name button one underscore click at line 42. So I'm going to double click on this. That will bring me to my designer.cs file and even bring me bring my blinking cursor right to the line where I have the error. So button one underscore click, uh, that's has the red squiggly underneath it because the um, Visual Studio cannot find that method. So if I uh, to get rid of this error, I need to delete this whole line of code. Now I can go back to my design view. Oh, there it is. I got my design view back, and I can get rid of my button, run my program, and no more errors. I just have this blank empty form. So that's something many people will run into, either changing the name of a control uh, in one place and that not being reflected on the designer.cs file. So let's add some controls to this form. First thing I want to add is a menu to the top left. And again, I recommend putting all of the controls on your form before you write any code associated with those controls. Menus and toolbars should be under common controls because it's a common thing, but uh, it's not there. You need to go down to menus and toolbars. And I'm going to drag on a menu strip. And I'm to make sure that this snaps to the top left portion of my form, uh, I'm going to use these guide snaps here. And you can see that that snaps into place on the top left and release. And then adding menu items is very easy. I'm going to add a file exit and a help menu with an about button underneath that. Good. So there's my menu. We can see how that looks like in the form. Very nice. Okay, let's add some more controls. Next thing I want to add is a list box. A list box under common controls. And again, I'm going to use these snaps to snap it to the left and to the top. When I release that, there is my list box. And let's change some properties of this before we add our other controls. First thing I want to change is the name of this list box. I'm going to call this list box names list box. Hit enter. Now you see the word, the phrase names list box up here. But actually, if I compile and run this, that list box is going to be empty. It's just displayed there. For, uh, for our reference so that we know that this control is named names list box even though it doesn't appear in the actual form. And none of my buttons work yet. That's okay. We'll add functionality to them later. Okay, and below our names list box, let's add a text box. List boxes I cannot click on and, and type in information. I can click and type, uh, type information into a text box. And let's make that clean and uh, make it the same width as our names list box. And we'll change the name of this to name text box. Good. And then here to the right of the list box, I want to add what's called a group box. A group box is used to uh, contain a, a list of radio buttons. So a group box, I'm going to use these snaps again. It's going to be too big. So I can make this smaller, or I could have made my form wider. And I don't want to call this group box one. I want to call this um, uh, format group box. And then down in the text property, the word format. Format is what's going to appear up here. Now let's drag in three radio buttons into that group box I just created. Those are under common controls. Here are my radio buttons. I want three of them in a column. And for each of these, we're going to change their name and their text property. So for the first one, we'll call this as typed radio button. These are in camel case. And for the text property, we'll be as typed, just like that. Whereas the second radio button, I'm going to set this name property to upper, oh, I'm sorry, upper radio button. And then it's text property to uppercase. And I'm going to type that all in uppercase so that the user knows when they click on this, that's the formatting that's going to be applied to the text that they type in. And then with my third radio button, I will change that name to lower 
radio button and the text property to lower case. Good. The final control I'm going to add to this form is a button. And let's add that directly underneath my format group box. And shift that up and align this button with the text box. That looks good. And for my button, I want to change its name to add item button, because that's what it's going to do. And set its text property to add item. Good. And this form's a little too tall, so I can shrink that down. And let's run it. Again, I don't have any methods associated with the controls on this form yet, so it's not going to have any functionality. But we can see that these radio buttons, I can only select one at a time. I could type in something here, uh, but I cannot type in anything into my list box. Add item, nothing happens when I click there. So let's now add some functionality to these controls that we created. First one I want to do is an easy one that's going to be the uh, exit menu strip item. So I'm going to double click on this and that's going to automatically generate a method and a delegate that tells um, the event handler that when that exit menu strip item is clicked that this method should be run. And so I'm going to exit the application and that's a simple line of code application.exit that is case sensitive and since exit is a method we need to have parentheses and we'll end that with a semicolon. Good. Let's shrink this up so we can make our code larger and hide our errors. Next I want to display a message box when the about menu strip item is clicked and uh, display a message box with okay and uh, a nice code snippet for doing message boxes is mbox followed by the tab key twice saves you some typing and so in here I just want to say programmer Louis Lumberjack good and then back to our form and we want to associate a method when this button is clicked so I'm going to double click on that to create a new method when the add item button is clicked and this one's going to be a little bit more involved I'm going to start this method by declaring a new string variable. And now we need to determine which radio button is selected and format the text accordingly. So we can do that easily with an if statement. I'm going to hit if in two tabs, which is a snippet that um, puts in some code for me and highlights what I need to change here. So if that upper radio button, if the checked property of the upper radio button is true, so if they have checked or selected or clicked on that upper case radio button, what do I want to do? I want to uh, format whatever they typed into the text box as uppercase. And so our name text box is text property. I want to set that to upper. And to upper is a built-in method with, uh, with each string. A common mistake that many students will make when working with controls is they will think they can do this. Okay, so we want to convert the text property of the name text box to uppercase. We don't want to convert the name text box itself to uppercase. That's an impossibility. The name text box is an object, whereas the text property of the name text box is a string. Strings we can convert to, to uppercase. Text boxes by themselves we cannot convert to uppercase. So this is the wrong way of doing it. I'm going to get rid of that. Okay. So uh, how about we do an else if now. So if they 
units have the lower radio button selected. And if they have the lower radio button selected, I'm going to do the same thing as above, but not call the two upper method. I'm going to call the two lower method. Good. And if they don't have the uppercase or the lowercase selected, I'll assume that they have the as typed radio button selected. So we're just going to catch all of that in an else statement and set that new name string equal to the text property of the name text box. Good. Again, these are two equal signs we're using up here because we are testing uh, equality. This is a comparison operator. A single equal sign like this is used for assignment. That means take what's ever on the right side of the equal side and put it into whatever is on the left side of the equal sign. Two equal signs, very different. Testing equality. Good. Last thing we need to do here is add that formatted item to our list box. And so we're going to access the names list boxes items property. And what are we going to do? We're going to add an item. And I want to add that new name string that I created up here and then formatted accordingly in the if statement. Again, I want to show you a common mistake that students make with this. It's this. It's a common mistake students will make. Oh, they're thinking I want to add to the names list box. So I can just do this. No, you need to add an item to the names list box. We cannot add directly to the list box. We can add to the items of the list box. So this is correct. And now, uh, now let's give this a run and see how all of our controls are working. So first I'm going to check to see if my message box appears. Help about. There it is. Programmer Louis Lumberjack. I like that. And I'm a, I'm a Sherlock Holmes fan. So let's try um, uh, putting that into our list. I'm going to add item. And I added that as all uppercase. Great. And Sherlock Holmes biographer, John Watson. So we want to put that in all lowercase. And when I click Add Item, it's going to format this to lowercase and put it in my list box. And then Sherlock Holmes' nemesis is James Moriarty. Putting that in mixed case just because he's a crazy messed up guy. Let's put it in there as typed. We could put it in there as uppercase. We could put it in there as lowercase. Um, Louis Lumberjack. I want that in all caps. Put that in my list. So you see how this works. It's functioning as we wanted it to. So we have methods associated with the click event of this add item button. We have methods associated with the click event of about. And we haven't tested this yet, but let's see if our click event of our exit menu strip item works. It does.